The Reverend Dr. Jesse Jackson needs no introduction. But usually when someone says that, either he doesn't know enough about the person he is going to introduce, or he wants to save time. Uh, for me, the latter applies. But of course, it would also be a futile act for me to try and to take you through his elaborate and remarkable CV. Instead, what we have done is to make available a concise version of that CV in the programs that are in front of you. We think that will help us to save time to allow the Reverend Dr. Jack Jackson to once again inspire us with his address on the crisis of values in contemporary society. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together to welcome the Reverend Dr. Jesse Jackson. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I am uh, delighted to return here again as a bona fide, authenticated, verified doctor made so by this university. I'm grateful for this opportunity. Let me express my thanks to you for such a kind and generous introduction and for hosting us on this occasion today. We've been uh, in back in Africa, South Africa, since uh, Tuesday. We've had a round of uh, <clears throat> exploratory talks in Johannesburg about building a more direct relationship with our allies in the U.S. and the U.K. and South Africa, a triangle of relationships to offset the strangulation triangle of the U.S.A., U.K., South Africa, apartheid years of terror uh, and oppression, we seek to build better relations between the citizens of the USA, the UK and South Africa, make for a better and a different world. We met with leadership of the ANC as they prepare to celebrate the 100th anniversary in 2012. We met with uh, uh, business leaders and university leaders and uh, Democrats uh, abroad uh, spent considerable time with uh, uh, Winnie Mandela with whom we've met, worked with over a period of years. We first came to South Africa in 1979. She could not meet because she was banished and under house arrest at that time. And maybe, yes, they may be capped off by a meeting with the uh, USA and and USA soccer teams, university, the university, should I say, the Union of South Africa and the Union of States of America. And they had a soccer team showdown, USA played USA, so USA could not lose. But it was a glorious meeting, but met with them with Madiba, with President Mandela on yesterday as he was congratulating uh, both teams. And of course, in that case, it was a, a tough but a friendly match between friends where you, under the new rules you could choose the winner or the loser by regional values not by racial values you could choose them by direction and not by complexion with the winner won with uh, grace and the loser lost with dignity and they both are the better for it but to see President Mandela doing so well and still strong enough to share his his affection and love was just a good scene so we had the glorious meeting with him on yesterday and now we're here with you uh, today yesterday I revisited Soweto again you look at Soweto and you look at downtown Joburg in so many ways both groups are locked into their positions both have the right to vote. But one clearly needs more health care to close that gap. One needs drinkable, drinkable water. As I think about this soccer match between the USA and, and the USA, is what made that match so different. It gives us a sense of the ability to win the game with grace, lose with dignity, 
there's a sense on that soccer field of inherent justice. For on that field, the plan field is even. And the rules are public. And the goals are clear. Rules are public. Goals are clear. And there's a fair referee. On that field of play, you must earn your goals. You cannot inherit them. On the other hand, there are a set of political laws that you must face the public every two, four, or six years, as the case may be, or five years, as the case may be. In the real sense, on the economic side, while effort and excellence and hard work means a lot, inheritance, access, and laws of perpetuity means even more. Those are two different systems. And that's why for some there's a kind of frustration that we won our freedoms. We, we now have the right to vote. We've made progress, but there's much to be done, and there is much to be done. Now, I, I would say in, in closing that what makes your challenge different? Those who fight them for, for freedom had a different challenge than those of you who are fighting for equality. Each generation has its own burden as we move toward the even playing field. <clears throat> if you are fighting for freedom, and freedom was on the other side of the bridge. You can mobilize a thousand people to march across that bridge to get freedom. If they had the stamina to walk across the bridge, the will to walk, the will to sacrifice, willing to take the risk of being brutalized and martyred as many of them were, but the sheer will of courage you can get across that bridge. You must know that we survive learning to survive apart. And while we learn to survive apart, I'm black, I'm colored, I'm Indian, I'm white, I have survived without you. We have a bigger challenge than surviving apart. We must now live together. Learning to survive apart was a bad lesson learned well. Learning to survive apart was a bad lesson learned well. <clears throat> now, living together is, requires a different skill set, a different will to overcome the lines of division and to build walls and to build bridges and tear down ancient walls. And so the lasting value of President Latouli was he saw Africa through a keel, not just through a door. He didn't see Africa hit by, limited by walls of race, gender, religion. And then said South Africa isolated from its neighbors next door. And to that extent, we must see this area through a door and not through a keyhole. The Bible makes the case with all of our talk about unity that without vision the people perish. We must see it. Without vision we perish. And so let's see a new day. And pursue it. It's possible. It belongs to us. It's in the realm of necessity. And we can win. Thank you very much.